On this Pedalbox road trip, we're back at Shelsley Walsh for Retro Rides Gathering 2021.
Well, we're up in the show now. There is loads of stuff here in Retro Rides parking. As you can see behind me, there is Betty. That's Hubnut's car. I've managed to get him up here safely. Uh, we bumped into Laurie as well from Laurie's Mechanical Marvels earlier on, which was really cool to see. So we had a chat with them. And now we're just going to take a walk around Retro Parking and see what there is kicking about, because there is loads and loads of stuff here. There is a whole bunch. Well, as you can see, there's a five-door Mark II Golf uh, and a Nova Fiesta, and then a whole bunch of Fiats back here on, as you can probably tell. It's all done up in the Jurassic Park theme, which is excellent. And it even has a C5 on the roof, which is really, really cool. Not entirely sure how you get that down quite so easily, but I'm sure it's great. And on the left, we have a whole bunch of Rover Metros. There's loads of them, one after another, all here. I mean, it is big. It is a big club of them, so you'd expect a lot of them to be here all in one, but they're looking really, really nice. That one looks a bit more serious because it has a big fat turbo underneath. So that Metro is looking pretty serious. There's a nice Reliant Scimitar over there, which is looking really good as well. That's really clean. Got to assume that that must have had some work. They never seem to survive looking that good for that long. Uh, as you can see, the, the Metro line continues all the way up to this one, which is very rally looking, which is great to see. Um, and then what, what else have we got? So yeah, so that was the Metro Power Group, so explains why it's full of Metros. Over here there's a Prelude, which I'm pretty sure was following us all the way in this morning when we arrived. There's not many of these kicking about on the road, especially few, very few cars with actual pop-up headlights still. On this side we've got the Ford Console, and I think that's a Mark, yeah, Mark 1 Jetta over this side as well, next to the console, and then some lovely big Volvo Power. Nice big long roof Volvos there. So we've got Triumph 2000 over on this side as well. We don't see many of them left anymore. That one's not looking too bad, all things considered. I mean, it's a K reg, so it's going to be well, mid 60s. My, uh, my knowledge of the old Triumphs isn't that good. Nice bread van next to it as well with a big intake in the grill. I'm guessing that's probably not that stock. Nice mini and a more, slightly more modern bread van after that. And on this side, there's a couple of Daihatsu Shirards. You do not see many of them kicking around anymore. So to see two next to one another, it's a little bit weird. And one of them has been fully caged up, so I bet that's a bit brisk. So yes, this Daihatsu is a really nice looking 12 valve uh, turbo. So I'm willing to bet there's even fewer of them on the road than there are Shirards at this point. Although I'm willing to bet quite a few of them have probably gone. And it's just the really nice ones, the interesting ones that are left. So down here we've got BMWs, E36 and an E30 wagon. Do love me a wagon. So even though the paint's looking a little bit tatty on this, it's really nicely cared for. Or other than that, you can see the really nice patina down the side. Now, once upon a time, I went around the Nürburgring in an Evo 6 Tommy Mackinnon edition, which isn't too far removed from this Evo 5. I can tell you it was horrendously terrifying. Brisk, really good fun, but at the same time, equal parts fun and abject terror because it was absolutely insane. And the guy hadn't been driving it very long, so it made it extra fun and terrifying that way. So at the top end of this row, we've got the XR Owners Club. So we've got a massive selection of XR3Is, well, two XR3Is, one coupe and one uh, convertible, XR2i, XR4 Sierra, and then another XR3 uh, Mark IV Escort, I think. Those two are Mark III's, that's a Mark IV. And then there's another Mark III XR3i on the end of the row, that side. And then this is West Midlands All Sorts Club, which I'm guessing probably has all sorts of different cars in, considering there is a Honda, another Ford XR2, and a Rover 216 Cab. Now, I haven't seen many Hillman imps on the road, or indeed anywhere ever, and here there are four all behind me, and there's at least two more on the hill as well. And I know also very little, and yet there is a company that I didn't know existed, one and then the little saloon version. I didn't even know that body style was ever made and this is probably the only time someone will spend so long talking about imps when there is a skyline on the other side. And this is how you relax at the show. Walked around a lot, getting a little bit tired. Just drop the back of the seat in front of you down, put on nice cassette and just relax. What could be better? 
So this is the Toyota Century. As you can see, aside from all of the masses of tech and luxury inside, it is an enormous car. Wing mirror is right out front. This is a very Japanese Luxo barge. In fact, this is probably the most Japanese, most Luxo barge that exists. Um, it's a five liter V8. It's only about 220-ish horsepower, uh, similar sort of pounds, feet torque, but it just wafts around everywhere. It's a very lazy, relaxed, super quiet thing to just cruise about in. It's basically made for the diplomats, the government and everybody like that. And there's not many of these in the UK. I actually saw one of these in London not that long ago. And I thought this was the same one because there are so few, but this one's not the same one. Uh, and they are just, they're really thin on the ground, but look at the size of them. They're just absolutely fantastic to look at. They're enormous, they're plush, they're just, they're full of technology. Even like, the sort of the early generation versions of this had phones and computers in in the back in the 80s. It was absolutely wild and the amount of gear in this is just incredible.
So aside from Chris's SD1 being at the show, there is also a much better racier version of his car here. And this is a proper TWR uh, Rover V8 with the V8 in, and it's just been up the hill and it sounded fantastic. So you originally built the car, you'd, sorry, your dad originally built the car yeah. and now you maintain it together and, yeah. Yeah. and run it as is. We, we run it, race it together. Um, we do a, a series called Motor Racing Legends. Nice. Um, uh, which we, we run, the, run the car in. Mm -hmm. uh, we were fortunate enough to do uh, the Festival of Speed at Goodwood oh, awesome. uh, a number of weeks ago. Brilliant. Um, again, I'm trying to outnoise most things. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of Driftwork cars here who are on the limiter trying to compete with you, and you just sort of trundle by, make a bit of noise, and they all disappear and yeah. go away into the yeah. distance. Pop, pops and bangs and things like that will <laughs> outnoise it, but, um, but just raw power um, yeah. and noise from, from this is just, it's just awesome. How much power does it make? Uh, 305. 305, Not okay. Not to be specific. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty close. It's, it's a well over 300, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. it's, um, it's still running three and a half litre. So okay, so it's, yeah. ah, it's, it's not, not bored, it's not it's not decent to stroke no, or anything like that. Built, it's yeah. exactly as it was the three and a half. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's, it's built and maintained um, and owned by Ken Clark Motorsport. Um, mm -hmm. The engine's built by John Eels. Okay. Well, so who is the Rover V8 man? Sure. Um, <laughs> Just uh, passing the engine, receive goodness back. Yes. Yeah, Perfect. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> exactly um, what you want. The car's got sort of a, an interesting history, shall yeah. we say. Uh, at the end of 83. Because it, um, it was originally built in 83 was, for the 83 Championship. It, yeah. it won the, uh, the Touring Car Championship in 83. Nice. It was then stripped of that for some technical yeah. infringement. Say. <laughs> um, it won, and it we won. think it was That's unfair. It. Yeah, we'll, stick, we'll, stick, yeah. we'll, we'll stick with it won. Um, it then sort of got shelved and stripped of its running gear. Yeah. Um, the shell was then used as a spare, just in case. And luckily yeah. it was never ever used again. Yeah. It then went into it was never prang, never cut up, never uh, just mothballed, basically. Yeah, it, it was, yeah. You, you, yeah. You're absolutely spot on. Um, it then disappeared off into Europe as a show car. Right. Um, around all the Rover dealers. Um, eventually found its way into a scrapyard. Would wow. you believe? <laughs> where it was, um, it was found sat on top of another car. Um, At least it wasn't the other way around, and something sat on top of this. Yeah. So yeah. it's um, <sighs> as lucky it still retained all of its original um, instruments, switch yeah. gear, um, some telltale bits. Largely, other than stripped, it's all largely original parts. You know, sort of yeah. the, obviously yeah. spec seats and all the rest. But like dashboard is original console. That yeah. you name yeah. it, and it's if all you look, uh, as at all is. The clocks, apart from the rev counter, it's got a, a modern rev counter in it. Yes, um, makes sense. All, all the original clocks. Nice. Uh, the original ones that were in the car in That's cool. And there's not many of them around still running all of their original parts, yeah. let alone a championship winning. Yeah. However, <laughs> however yeah. you want to, to classify it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. So definitely if it's uh, going up again, we're going to get some video of it going up the track once again. Yeah, it'll, and, yeah, uh, it'll, it'll go up again. Cool. Uh, what time, I don't know. Um, we'll hear it. You will, we'll <laughs> definitely you'll hear, you'll hear it. it, it. See it. Yeah. Um, we'll hear as it yeah. starts up and like tootles around the back and be like, yeah. go, go, run, go, 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 go. Run, run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, so it's uh, really good to see. Uh, I know Chris. Chris really likes the uh, the SD ones. Obviously, he's got two, okay, uh, so he's okay. got 2600, which we have on the channel, and he's Somebody been gradually rebuilding it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the 2600 is kind of being mechanically rebuilt, and uh, it's just been it just had all the, all the bodywork redone. So it's had all of the rust taken out, metal put back in, and then repainted. So it's looking uh, really, looking really good, nice, and it's just nice, nice. it's going to get turbo eventually, as is planned. So okay. it's going to be a boosted 2600 SD. One. Around about 300 brake is the target, so okay. yeah. So you're going to put a turbo on the size of um, Chelsea yeah. Walsh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Big turbo, many lag, yes. anti lag, fine. Yeah, yeah. they weren't <laughs> the most reliable and strongest of engines at the no. time, but um, it's, uh, hey, the, good we, luck with that one. Yeah, it's stripped one apart, and uh, the crank is enormously oversized for, what, for the amount of power it has in it. It's horrific. It's just like this is 50% of the weight of the engine, is just the crank. So, yeah. yeah, but no, we're looking forward to seeing this running if, up again. If it doesn't work, it'll make a good boat anchor. Exactly. Put it like that, it <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. No we'll uh, we'll see you on the hill later. Yeah, you will. Thanks Brilliant. for your time. Thanks. Thanks.
We and I'm sure everybody that went to the event wants to make a heartfelt thanks to all of the marshals and everybody else who made this event possible. If you're interested, you can check out marshalling and do a taster day near you. Just go to the link in our description at the bottom or go to marshals.co.uk and have a look there. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell to get all the notifications when we put up new videos. Have a look at shop.pedalbox.show for merch and more and have a look at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show if you'd like to support us, our channel, and the builds from as little as a dollar a month. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.